everyone, I've got some new exciting information that I've come across that I wanted to share. So back when I made my um, first video about Pentecost in Cancer, I created this um, diagram of, you know, kind of the sequence of events. Um, and I used the signs that they were in the time of Jesus because we were following different scriptures that led us down to this time of Cancer. Um, and what I did after that was to kind of shift them so that we put Pisces first occurring after the spring equinox so that as a time signs that they are now. Um, and um, it appears that we are um, about a month off. Maybe we weren't supposed to do that and instead to just kind of take them back with the, not necessarily our year starting, but with, you know, the events kicking off in the time that they did when the Lord walked on earth. So, um, Diana, I'm sure people, a lot of people have seen this already, received a message that, um, yes, in fact, we are a month off. Um, 8-1 is really 7-1 which is really interesting um, because I had seen a passage that really stood out to me from this book called Antiquities of the Jews um, that does mention the sign of Aries. Now this book was um, written by um, what's his name? A Jewish historian Flavius Josephus, and this was, you know, right around AD 93, 94. Um, and his reason, his motivation for this, this very large volume of work was um, to document all their antiquities, the constitution of their government as interpreted out of the Hebrew scriptures, and this was um, necessary because there were a lot of misconceptions at that time about the Jewish people in his time. And they didn't really have, they were thought to lack great historical figures and a credible history of their people. So um, this historian provided a Hellenized version of the Jewish history um, so that he could plead their case. Um, into a larger audience. So it's by a Jewish um, historian. And what I found here was, if you look here, in the month of Hanticus, which is by us called Nisan, the beginning of our year, on our 14th day of the lunar month, when the sun is in Aries. For on this month, it was that we were delivered from bondage under the Egyptians. The law ordained that we should every year slay that sacrifice, which I before told you, we slew when we came out of Egypt, and which was called the Passover. Um, he goes on to talk about how it happens. Um, falls on the 15th day of the month, and continue seven days where we feed on unleavened bread. Um, they're killed, the lambs. On the second day of unleavened bread, which is the 16th day of the month, they first partake of the fruits of the earth. So that's the first fruits. And then it goes on to say. When a week of weeks has passed after over the sacrifice, that's like the 49 days on the 50th day, we call Pentecost. Okay, we bring to God a loaf of wheat flour with leaven. And that's basically his explanation of the events from Passover to Pentecost. So I found it really interesting that, you know, he did say, Sun is in Aries, for on this month, it was very important 
we were delivered from bondage from the Egyptians. Okay, and this is the time of the Passover. So I had seen this before, and I thought it was um, something to keep in mind, but I was really hoping that, you know, since his ascension occurred, you know, right after Gemini, that, you know, we would be, um, that would be a high watch time, but I always understood that it could be towards the end of Cancer. Um, now, something that's even more exciting that I found um, was I had always wondered when we were first, when Diana was first looking at um, Enoch's calendar, um, somebody sent her this diagram that was sketched up by um, their son um, that had been receiving um, training um, in his dreams or something. So she put it up and I had been trying to understand what this was. And it occurred to me, now that I'm using Stellarium more frequently, that it might be like side reel things. So I started looking into that, but then I actually think I found what these are. And the, the HR I found is, um, it's like a referencing system. It's called Harvard Revised Star Catalog that documents the um, brightest stars in the sky. So they all have a number. And each one of those I found in this catalog. So the first um, star in the circle is 142. So that's um, this star, Cetus. Um, and I'll show that. Here. See, this is HR 142. There's several catalogs that call them different things, but they mentioned HR, so I put that in there. And there it is. And it is in the constellation. Where is it? Cetus. Okay. Then the next star is 220. HR 220. So I found that one here. It's also in Cetus. I hope I'm saying that right. The next one, if you're looking at the cross, 660. So that one I found Delta Triangulae. Um, where's the number? There it is, HR 660. Okay. And I don't remember I had a dream about a triangle. Maybe this is the triangle I'm being pointed to. And the last one in the circle is 365. And that one is HR365 in the constellation Cassiopeia. So then um, this one appears to be outside of this quadrant. Um, 440, and it's actually um, HR 440, see there. Um, that is Delta Photo Initiates, and that one is in the constellation Phoenix. Okay. Now, what was really interesting was that all of the ones in this circle that comprise the four quadrants of the circle are actually constellations within Aries. And this one is not. So if we have a look at Stellarium, and go back to the time of Aries. Here we see here is Cetus, here is Triangulum, and here is Cassiopeia. So these two um, elements here are in Aries. So um, that's interesting. I was actually able to pinpoint the exact star there, HR 660. 
do like that one. And um, within triangle, but it's, you know, there's so many on these that I couldn't really find the other ones. And my Stellarium search isn't really working. But, you know, note it, this is, you know, obviously in two dimensions, but obviously this is in, in, in three. Um, so, I, you know, you could technically get two here and go up to Cassiopeia and come back down and make a circle. And maybe that's an, an exact position in the sky that we're being pointed to. And then, um, but I really thought that was a confirmation for the importance of Aries. Maybe that's, you know, what we really should be looking for. Um, after all, this picture does say, look, look there. Um, and then this other number, 440, um, that's actually before. I guess that would correspond to right at the beginning of the year. But this is a phoenix. And, uh, you know, maybe look. It would be within this phoenix constellation. Um, and I know that, I don't really know that much about it, but I knew, you know, that that's considered a symbol possibly of the Antichrist. So, um, hmm, I just thought that was interesting. I'm going to take a look up, uh, at that a little bit more, but um, maybe that's when he came out as well. And he's just waiting and looking <laughs> for all of this to get kicked off. I don't know. Um, so that was interesting. Uh, that, oh yeah, I said, are they all, all of these four stars in the circle, circling the sacrificed animal, bringing our attention to that? Because um, it is, you know, set to... The two stars, the setas are below, and then these other two are above, you know, the lamb. So it's like really circling around here, maybe. Um, so then if you take that into account then, that that was supposed to be the first month is really Aries. Because that's when... That is when the Passover lamb was slain, when the Lord sacrificed himself for us. Then we go with um, our first day. Um, and I'm just using the Jewish calendar here because, um, you know, it just, it seems that the moon is significant. So, and you know, even if you use the Enoch calendar, it's not really that much off. It's usually just, you know, a week or so. So, it just makes this easier. So, this would be ER. This is the second lunar month of ER, April 27th. So, on April 27th, yes, the sun is definitely in Aries. We see that. So technically, this would be when we would start um, figuring out when the Passover is. And it would be uh, the Omer count starts on the 16th, according to that passage we read by the Jewish historian. And here's the 16th, our ER. So our day one would have been May 12th. Our day 50 for the first feast of wheat, which would be grain, would have corresponded to June 30th. You start counting for the second feast of wheat for new wine, you get to August 18th. Now, interesting that in August 18th, we are in the third decan of Cancer. The sun is about to go into Leo, and the third decan is this boat here, okay? Um, it's 
I was hoping that that meant that we were leaving at that point and we started boarding. But I mean, here we are. The sun is right now. Just entering Cancer, but you know, the boat is there. The loading could really start whenever. I think this is our lunar day, which is a period between two new moons, that maybe this boarding could happen. So that's very exciting. Um, another thing that I found interesting was that if you start, you know, the Omer count in your, um, based on the new wine feast of weeks. Um, August 1st ends up being Omer day 33. So, so June 30th was the first day. And then you go one two, three, four, five, okay, and so then this is day 35, 34, 33, and you know, this is the day, the ninth of Av, which commemorates the destruction of the two temples, and we know that day 33 of the Omer is like the only day out of that whole period um, that weddings and celebrations happen and they have fireworks. Um, so I just thought that was interesting that it coincided with that day. Um, another thing, because I was interested in researching more about the moon and one of the websites that I found to be most useful in understanding calendars um, also you know talks about the four quarters of the moon and how these were actually used um, to talk about to figure out after a week had happened you know, because each one corresponds roughly to a week. Um, I noticed that in starting in after the solar eclipse with the new moon, that happens in Leo. Then the rest of these phases all happen in the same in the signs of the four living creatures of Revelation 4, which is really interesting. So if we go take a look at Revelation 4, um, first beast was like a lion, the second beast like a calf, the third beast like a man, and the fourth beast like an eagle. And I talked about that in my pole shift video, or, um, you know, those are the exact same um, images in these visions, the vision of Ezekiel, the Daniel's vision in Daniel 7, and, you know, in Revelation, the lion, the ox, the man, and the eagle. And all of these are apocalyptic verses in the Bible, you know, so that, that signal destruction happening. Starting on the 21st of August, on the 21st of August, it's clearly in Leo. The 29th of August is the first quarter, but it'll be on Scorpio. The full moon is September 6th. So September 6th, 
There it is in Aquarius, the face of man. And on the 13th of September at 9.24, there it is in Taurus, the ox. So I just thought that was really interesting. I also have some more information about the eclipse and some other interesting things that I found. I'll put that in another video so this doesn't get too long.